Alright, yeah, welcome back. Uh, just get me, let me get the pointer. Yeah. Right, so with monthly compounding, then the next thing that you need to note here yeah, is the number of months in a year, it will be 12. Yeah. Therefore, the number of months for the term, okay, you cannot use two years here because it's, uh, it's not uh, compounded uh, once a year. Yeah. Therefore, you need to do, get the number of months yeah, for the term. So, two years multiplied by 12. Yeah. So, this is uh, N multiplied by M. So, you get this N here, yeah, 24, yeah, 24 months. All right, once you've got that, okay, so what are the known three elements in this example? Yeah, Known three elements are the present value of NVT, which is this. This is an NVT problem, yeah, because you want monthly payment, yeah. So there is an NVT payment here. This so therefore this is the present value of NVT. This is known. R is known because uh, it is indirectly known. So once you know APR, you know the number of uh, compounding in a year. This is M. APR and M is known. Therefore, you can get R. Yeah, R is known. Uh, so R is known. Then M. Okay, M is actually N. The small N. Yeah, number of years multiplied by M. Yeah, number of compounding in a year. Therefore, this is also known. Capital N here is also known. Okay, then uh, given APR and M, you can work out this. Yeah, so N is known, but R and N are indirectly known. Yes, yeah? uh, indirectly known. What is the unknown element? The fourth unknown element will be the payment. Yeah, you need to solve for the payment. The question tells you which is the unknown. Yeah. So your monthly payment is the unknown. So therefore, we can use the formula for determining the payment, yeah, the NVT payment. Now this is the formula, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the general formula for the present value of NVT. This is the present value equals to the NVT payment. Okay. This is ordinary NVT payment, yeah. Multiplied by one minus one plus R. Yeah. Note this. R is here. 16.9% divided by 12. Yeah? Note this here. Yeah? APR divided by M is R. Yeah? So this is R here. Then raised to the power of negative capital N. Yeah? N here is small n multiplied by M. Yeah? 2 years multiplied by 12. Therefore it's negative 24. All this divided by R. R is 16.9% divided by 12. Same here. Yeah? 16.9 divided by 12. Yeah? So now you want to solve for this. So you bring this over to this side. 3,500 multiplied by this. Okay, here. Then this will be divided here. Yeah? So the answer is $172.88. Yeah? Now this is the problem that we have seen before. Yeah? The only difference is now we adjust the R. Yeah? R was not given directly. Yeah? It was given directly before. It is not given directly here. Yeah? So you need to compute the R. Then you also have to compute the N, yeah, capital N. It's not given directly because it's not compounded once a year. Yeah? It's compounded 12 times a year, monthly. Therefore, you need to get the number of months. Okay, so that's the difference. Otherwise, the formula is the same. Yeah? So you can apply this uh, to solve yeah? such a problem. Let's look at another example. Now, just now we, we dealt with uh, present value. Yeah? Now we look at future value. Future value, excuse me, yeah? future value with monthly compounding. Yeah? Let's look at this example. Suppose you deposit $50 okay, a month. So $50 a month is already an NET, yeah? a stream of fixed cash flow. Yeah? All right, into an account that has an APR. Okay? It tells you directly this is APR of 9%. Yeah? This is the annual rate based on monthly compounding. So if monthly compounding, M must be 12. Yeah? There are 12 months in a year. Okay. So how much would you have in the account in 35 years? Yeah? The term is 35 years, but because it's a month, okay, monthly compounding, and you pay, yeah? the payment is monthly. So the compounding must need to be monthly as well. Yeah? If it's not monthly, then you have to convert this to be monthly. Yeah? These two must agree. Payment is monthly, the compounding must also be monthly. If the payment is weekly, the compounding must also be weekly. Yeah? These two must agree. Yeah? Right. 
and then because it's year, you need to convert this to months. Yeah. So the first thing that you do is you convert this to the the period rate. Yeah. Is APR. You get the period rate. So you get nine percent divided by twelve. It is zero point zero seven five. Yeah. Or uh, it is uh, equal to zero point seven five percent. Yeah. Zero point seven five percent. Then the second adjustment that you need to make is the number of months. Yeah. 35 multiplied by 12, you get 420 months. Yeah. Now the future value formula is this. Okay. Now here, what are the three known elements? The payment is known. Okay, fifty dollars a month. The R we can compute. Okay, which is nine percent divided by 12. That's the R here. N is 35 multiplied by 12, 420. You got that there. Okay. And then the unknown element is the future value of NWT, yeah, FVA. Future value of NWT, we can use the same formula, $50 multiplied by 1 plus R. R is here, 9% divided by 12, raised to the power of N, capital N here, is 35 years multiplied by 12, yeah. Minus 1 divided by 9% divided by 12 here. Therefore, you will have 147000 Eighty-nine dollars and twenty-two cents. Yeah, same answer here. Okay, that's the formula. Yeah. All right. So this is a future value. Yeah. We have done future value before. The only difference here again is the change in this R. R is not given directly. You're given APR and you're given uh, the compounding frequency in a year. Yeah. And therefore, you need to adjust this. This is the first adjustment that you make. You need to get the R. It's not given directly. And then you need to work out the N. Yeah, capital N. How many periods of compounding? Okay, so these two adjustments need to be made, then therefore you get the answer. Yeah. Alright, let's move on. Okay, another example here. Okay, now this time it is not an NVT. Yeah, this is not an NVT, it's only uh, a single sum. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this example. You need fifteen thousand dollars in three years. Yeah. So fifteen thousand dollars in three years is the future value. This is known. Yeah. For a new car, you can deposit money into an account that pays an APR of five point five percent based on daily compounding. How much would you need to deposit? Again, here APR is given. The R is not given. Yeah. Not given directly. Yeah. It, it is known, but. Uh, it is not given directly. So let's look at the elements that are known. Yeah? Three known elements. The future value is known. This is 15,000 in three years. R, 5.5% is given, but this is the APR, not the R, yeah? the period rate. You need the period rate in the formula. Yeah? So the period rate is 5.5% uh, divided by 365 yeah? because it's daily compounding. 365 days in a year. So you divide this, so in every day you compound this much of interest, yeah? So it's a very small amount, okay? 0 0.001, yeah? If it's percentage, it's 0 0.01, yeah? 5068493%, yeah? All right, the second adjustment, N, yeah? N is not given directly, it's given as three years, but three years, this is not compounded yearly yeah therefore you need to compound you need to get the term in number of days yeah so it's three multiplied by 365 you get 1095 days that's the term yeah all right therefore you need 15,000 okay this is the future value which is known the R is known here the N is known here yeah so you need to work out the uh, uh, present value you take the future value divided by 1 plus R raised to the power of N, yeah? So, 15,000, this is not future value, yeah? This is supposed to be present value, okay? Future value is 15,000, but this is equal to present value multiplied by this raised to the power of 365, yeah? This is R, okay? This formula is not learned here, yeah? This is in uh, chapter 5, yeah? We have learned this in chapter 5, yeah? Future value is equal to present value multiplied by 1 plus R raised to the power of N. Yeah? So here, the R is 5.5% divided by 365. And N here is 3, the small n multiplied by M, yeah? 365 days in a year. Therefore, uh, 
uh, you get this answer, yeah, 15,000 divided by this, you get this value, yeah, because this, okay, is divided, yeah? this divided by that, you get the present value, yeah, so you get $12,718.56, yeah, so if you have this much now, deposit it now at the APR of 5.5% compounded monthly, Okay, at the end of three years, you'll get $15,000, yeah? And you can use that to buy your new car. That's the idea behind this example, yeah? Let's move on. Now, we come to continuous compounding, yeah? Okay, sometimes investments or loans are figured based on continuous compounding, yeah? Just now, we said compounding uh, monthly, yeah? And then we also have daily compounding, yeah? Okay, can you go more than daily? Yes, yeah, you can go, in fact, hourly, then you can go uh, every minute, yeah? But this is called continuous compounding. That, that means you take it to the maximum limit of compounding, yeah? Frequency of compounding. So that's called continuous compounding, yeah? So uh, how do you compute the EAR, yeah? Given continuous compounding, yeah? APR is given, so how do you get the... EAR, yeah, the effective annual rate. So uh, you use this formula. Okay, EAR is equal to one plus okay APR divided by n raised to the power of n minus one. Yeah, this is the normal formula that we have seen earlier. Yeah, one plus r raised to the power of n minus one is EAR. Yeah, we know that already. But r we express this as APR divided by n. Yeah, which is the same. But then now when m equals to infinity, yeah, when this becomes infinity, this also becomes infinity, then we call this continuous compounding. Yeah? So when you say continuous compounding, then we cannot use this formula, we use this formula here, yeah? which is E, okay? this is natural log base, yeah? we call this the base of natural log E. Yeah? Okay? Then you raise this to the power of APR here, yeah? then minus 1, okay? you get EAR. Yeah. So let's look at an example. What is the effective annual rate of 7%? This is APR compounded continuously. So for this, you take E, natural log base, yeah? E raised to the power of 7%. Yeah? 7% must be in decimal, 0 0.07. Then you minus 1. You get 7.25%, yeah? roughly. Yeah? So E, what is the uh, value of E? Okay, yeah, as I was saying, E, the value of E is actually 2.718218 and so on. Yeah? So roughly to uh, four decimal points, E is equals to 2.7183. Yeah? Alright, this is called the natural log base. Yeah? In mathematics, you may have learned this yeah, in school. So we use that, yeah? natural log base. Yeah? And then we raise this to the power of 0 0.07. Then you minus 1. You get 7.25. Yeah? Note that it is always higher than the APR. Yeah? Because you do continuous compounding, this must be higher. Yeah? So uh, you can test this. Yeah? You can say if you take this to 365 yeah? daily compounding, or you take it to hourly yeah? compounding and so on, you can keep increasing. Yeah? But the EAR will never be higher than this. Yeah? This is the maximum it can go. It cannot be higher than this. Yeah? Okay, so this is what we mean by continuous compounding. Yeah? There is such a, such a thing as continuous compounding. Alright, let's move on to the next slide. <coughs> okay, we come to the end of this part. Yeah? So this is a review of what we have covered uh, in this part, the definition of APR. APR is simply the nominal or stated interest rate yeah? in either a loan or a savings account or an investment. Yeah? What is EAR? EAR is the effective yeah, rate that you actually earn yeah, or you pay on an investment or uh, a loan. Yeah? So this is the effective rate, yeah, not a nominal rate. Now the third question, which rate should you use to compare alternative investments or loans? You must use EAR, not APR. Yeah? And which rate do you use in time value of money calculation? You don't use EAR, you don't use APR, yeah? In calculation, you use R, the period rate, okay? So, all three rates are 
used here one is a apr the other one is ear third one is period rate yeah 